Hey, what's up everybody? It's your mortgage expert, Brian McCauley here. So are you looking to buy a house in Dallas, Texas and you wanna renovate the property but you don't have your own cash and you wanna know how do I put that all together and wrap it all in one loan? Stick around, I'm gonna show you the secrets on how to do that next. Well, welcome back to the channel. You know, now more than ever in this housing market in Dallas, Texas, inventory is starting to pop up and buyers are finally able to get their hands on a property. However, what I've been hearing now more than ever is that even the properties that are coming on the market, the buyers don't love them, they like them. Problem with that is a lot of these properties still need work, either work just to get them up to par or maybe potentially upgraded to where the buyers actually like them. And so while that's not a big problem, what people don't wanna do is they don't wanna spend their own money. They don't wanna be cash poor, so they don't wanna go buy a $500,000 house it might need $50,000 in work. You gotta do 10% down, that's 50 grand. If you had to spend your own money for the 50 grand of work, all of a sudden you're out of pocket 100 grand. That's a big financial commitment. So there are a couple loan options out there that I wanna discuss, they're renovation loans. I call them a purchase plus loan. It's you purchase a property, Plus you wanna do some stuff to it, but instead of spending your own funds, we wrap it all into one loan and all you have to be required to do is take care of the overall down payment. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples today. I'm gonna to talk about the pros and the cons. I'm gonna talk about some setbacks, but I'm also gonna talk about some benefits. So tip number one, if you are looking to buy a property that needs renovations and you don't want to come out of pocket or don't even have the money to come out of pocket, the good news is on conventional loans, you can do a renovation loan. The all-in amount cannot exceed $647,000 for the total. So that is the maximum loan amount. That's still a whole lot on conventional loans. Anything above and beyond that, obviously you'd have to come out of pocket on cash, but the good news is you can wrap everything in all up to 647 with as little as 3% down. So you're only coming out of pocket about 18 grand and you can wrap all those renovations and repairs into it. FHA, FHA has what's called a 203K. There are two types, kind of like a small renovation loan and a big renovation loan on FHA. So depending upon which one you wanna do, if it's a little bit of work, it'll be the smaller 203K. If it's a big scope of work, like adding rooms, square footage, things of that nature, it'll be the large 203K. There are some other products for VA and there are some products for Jumbo, but they're really specific to the property. But the most popular ones that I've been seeing lately are conventional loans and FHA loans. So the good news is there's really there. I want to talk about the process a little bit and I want to talk about what to expect when going into a transaction like this. Expectation number one. When you're going to buy a property, and again, we'll use $500,000 as an example, you know, you don't know right up front as the buyer what all needs to be done on the property, but more importantly, what all you want to do. So traditionally, if you go buy a house as is for 500,000, it probably takes 30 days to close. If you're wanting to do a renovation loan, there are two big things that have to happen to make these loans work. Number one, you have to have an extended closing date. So you probably need to extend the closing time frame from 30 days to probably 45 to 50 days. How come? Well, anytime you're doing a renovation loan, it takes a little longer to get all the paperwork in order. Once you put your house under contract, you're gonna have to do a walkthrough with a general contractor and figure out exactly what needs to be done. It'll most likely take that general contractor two to three weeks to put together a scope of work and say, hey, you wanted new hardwoods, you wanted new paint, you wanted new carpet, you wanted new tile in the bathroom, the total's 40,000 bucks. So instead of obviously having a $500,000 purchase price, you would amend the contract to 540, you would send me the lender the scope of work for 40,000, and obviously we roll everything into the 540 and you'd only be responsible for the down payment. The reason you need the extended Closing time is because these contractors take a little bit of extra time to get the full scope of work back to you. Second piece about contractors is you can't just use any old contractor. When you are doing these renovation loans, these government sponsored entities, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are very specific about who they're going to allow to do the work. But more importantly, they wanna make sure they're qualified and they've got no bad ratings in the Better Business Bureau, they've got no pending lawsuits, they've got the right insurance. So these contractors also have to fill out a package through us, the lender, to get their credentials to make sure that they are okay and they are approved to do the work. So that extra two or three weeks that you need on the closing date is really specific to the contractor getting signed up, the contractor getting approved, and making sure the contractor can get you guys a full scope of work for whatever renovations or upgrades are needed. So that's part one. 
Part two, a couple things to understand on the appraisal. If you're buying a house at $500,000 as is, but you wanna add $40,000 in upgrades, what we have to do as the lender is once you finally get me that scope of work for the $40,000 of work, when you amend the contract from $500,000 to $540,000, now including all the upgrades, we have to send that to the appraiser. So properties, when they get appraised, they fall into one of two categories. As is, which means nothing's being done, or subject to, which means things are being done. The appraiser has to go out and appraise the property for what it's going to be worth after the renovations are done. Two reasons on that. One, we have to know exactly what the property is going to look like, what the renovations are going to do to the value and the condition. And we have to make sure that it's going to be comparable to homes in the area that have those upgrades. That's part one. Number two, we as the lender want to make sure that the buyer, the borrower, is not over renovating the property. Sometimes people can get carried away with the renovation piece and they want to put in hot tubs and they want to put in pools and all these things. And why it may add value to the property, it may not improve it dollar for dollar. And what we don't want is we don't want anybody going upside down and over renovating the property. So that's why you must send it to an appraiser. He or she will do a subject to and say, hey, you're buying this property for 500,000. There's $40,000 in work. I'm gonna marry the two together. I'm gonna go out to the property and look at it for what it's going to become in this neighborhood after all the renovations are completed. As long as that new value is the $40,000 or greater, there will be no issue with the renovation loan because obviously there's plenty of equity based on the projection and that renovation loan will continue and close out. The last piece about renovation loans I want you to know is the closing process. What happens is if you've gone through the pre-approval process, you're doing a renovation loan, you're under contract, you've talked to your contractor, you guys have agreed on a scope of work, you've gotten it back to us, we've increased the price, increased the contract, everybody's ready to go, the loan's all good, that $40,000 will be held at the title company that you close at. And then that money will be evenly distributed to the contractor scope of work and a couple checkpoints. One, to make sure that the appropriate amount of money is being distributed for the appropriate amount of stuff. And the reason behind this is that we don't want the contractors to overshoot or undershoot. So we don't want any overage at closing and we don't want any underage on the scope of work. And therefore at the closing table, the title company has a 10% contingency funds for change orders and shortages and all that to make sure that all the monies are distributed properly. So that's the way the loan shapes out. Those are the pros and the cons. If you can find a seller that will give you an extended two or three weeks in this market, which as it moves in the buyer's favor, you can be open to one of these loans. If you can't, you can always do this on a refinance, but you won't be able to do it all in one as a purchase. Find a seller that's willing to give you a 45 or 50 day close. Find a really good contractor that can get you a scope of work and a bid really quickly. Squeeze those together, get it back to me as the lender. Let me do the appraisal to make sure the value will be there after the fact. The rest of the loan process is the exact same as a traditional loan. Everything closes in funds. The money's held at title. They will distribute everything accordingly to the contractor as needed to get the scope of work done. So there's a really good check and balance system there. It's designed to protect. It's designed to make sure and keep people accountable. It's a really, really good loan. The biggest takeaway is you just have to get extra closing time, probably 45 to 50 days to make it work with these type of loans. So listen, hopefully you found some of this information useful or valuable. If you did, do me a favor, share this with somebody that you know that might need it. Like, comment, subscribe below. If you got any general questions at all about renovation loans, drop something in the comments. We promise to get back to you. Or hey, if you just wanna link up with me and talk about financial strategy, your future housing needs, credit, income, or anything mortgage related, do me a favor, call us, email us, text us. We're always here for you. Until next time, stay tuned.